90 days after you have been identified. And uh, further, do you understand, Ms. Vallow, that, um, as I said, uh, you and your attorneys uh, have the right to test the legality of the arrest. Um, you understand basically that you have a right to uh, have an extradition hearing. Yes. And do you understand that um, you have a right to have this extradition hearing, and this is to determine whether or not you are the person, in fact, that is named in the warrant that has been uh, some, uh, requested by the state of Idaho. Yes. And at this time, I uh, let me address uh, either yourself or your attorney. Um, will uh, Ms. Vallow be uh, waiving her right to extradition? Uh, no, Your Honor. She is uh, uh, exercising her right to an extradition hearing. And, and when are you uh, requesting that we have this hearing? Uh, Your Honor, I'm, I'd like to be heard on bail, and that will determine the answer. But the short answer is, if the court keeps bail as it is, we'd like it to be as Monday, as soon as possible. Uh, if the court is going to lower bail, uh, then it can go further out, such okay. that she can actually make it. And so this leads into your Which, request to lower bail? It leads to my request for bail. Your Honor, um, my understanding is this is a warrant from an Idaho court. It's not a governor's warrant. The application from the state says that they uh, intend to seek a governor's, governor's warrant, or they might seek a governor's warrant, I think, but uh, they don't have one yet. This is issued by Judge uh, Ed Eddings. Right. So as such, Hawaii law governs bail, not Idaho law, and that's HRS 832-14 and 832-15. So I, I would ask to be heard as to bail because we are sitting here uh, with uh, a couple felonies and misdemeanors and a half a million dollar bail. Um, and the points I want to make, they just follow, they just track the bail statute. But the points I want to make is, first of all, uh, Lori has a residence on Kauai. Her husband lives on Kauai. She remained in Kauai since Mr. DaCosta made contact with the police in January. They've known she was here. Mr. DaCosta has been in touch with them. I have the emails. Um, police knew she was represented by counsel on Kauai since January 30th uh, of this year as well. Um, she made a trip to Maui on vacation, but she left. Uh, she informed Mr. DaCosta, and he remained willing to produce her as soon as the police wanted her. He's been in contact with the police throughout this, again, offering to produce her. Um, instead, you know, she was arrested and media was calling us um, uh, all day. It seems like it was maybe a made-for-media event at taxpayer expense because, again, Mr. DaCosta offered to the police on January 30th, several police, that he would just simply turn her in. Um, she doesn't even have a passport. And, and as to the charges, as the court noted, uh, a couple of things the court noted today that were, were, were I guess, prescient and related. First of all, there's no life in prison or death penalty in this case. So she has a right to bail. And then again, that should be set by this court under this court's bail standards. The last case I just heard the court affirm a $1,000 bail on a misdemeanor. We've got two misdemeanors here and a couple of felonies. Um, under the Idaho statute, it appears that the maximum penalty for any of those felonies is like 13, 14 years. So they're basically like bees in Hawaii. And typically, I, you know, that would be typically more in the labor of $10,000 bail here or $20,000. And, and again, given um, her residency here, she hasn't. Fled. They, they didn't even need to arrest her, and Mr. DaCosta has been in touch with them the whole time. We would request that bail be reduced until the hearing uh, to a constitutional amount, an amount, in other words, that will ensure her appearance as opposed to ensuring that she can't make bail, which is the current uh, state of things. So what specific amount are you asking? I'm asking for $10,000. I think that's how the court would we typically see a bail like that in a case like this if it were here. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Kohler, your response. Judge, um, the charge, at least one of the charges that Ms. Vallow is facing in Idaho 
uh, felony abandonment or non-support of wife or children is punishable by imprisonment of up to uh, 14 years in prison. And that makes it at least the equivalent of a Class B in Hawaii, which does qualify as a serious crime under HRS 804-3A. We are asking that Ms. Vallow be remanded without bail. She checks every single box under 804-3 um, in that any person charged with criminal offense shall be bailable uh, by sufficient sureties, provided that bail may be denied where the charges for a serious crime, which this is, and one, there is a risk that the person will flee, which certainly is indicated in this case. She has already absconded from the jurisdiction where the underlying crime is alleged to have taken place. Two, there is a serious risk that the person will obstruct or attempt to obstruct justice. Indeed, one of the charges she's facing in Idaho is precisely that she has interfered with an investigation. Three, there is a serious risk that the person poses a danger to any person or the community. Um, certainly, uh, the charges she's facing um, indicate that risk, and there is uh, a serious risk that the person will engage in illegal activity. Uh, Your Honor, she has no ties to this island other than a uh, rented condominium in Princeville. Um, she has apparently resources uh, to travel and uh, leave, and Your Honor, the state submits that if ever there was a case suitable, you know our office does not request this on a regular basis, that a person be denied bail, this is the case that's appropriate for that. As far as the identification hearing goes, uh, for us to get the necessary documents from Idaho as well as Honolulu and uh, arrange that for the necessary witnesses, we're asking for an ID hearing to be set in the second week of March, uh, if that's what we're going to do. Your Honor has up to 30 days, uh, but to get the necessary people here from off-island, because everything does need to come from off-island, that is going to take some time and coordination. So we're asking for a date after March 5th on that. Okay. Uh, Mr. Kohler, uh, uh, a couple of things. Um, let's begin with um, a statement made by Mr. Hempy a few minutes ago. Are you in agreement with his categorization that this is not a governor's warrant on that? No, the governor's warrant has not been obtained yet. The governor's warrant is obtained after the person has been brought in and demanded, uh, exercised their right to demand the governor's warrant. The Madison County prosecutors, per my discussions with them, which have been ongoing, they are prepared to immediately seek their governor's warrant and have it domesticated in the state of Hawaii. Okay, very good. Uh, now, um, Mr. Kohler, the, the, I guess the most important question I have is why would it take uh, three weeks to, to get the, um, the witnesses or other means of identification so that we can go forward with the hearing? Because we need to get um, fingerprints from Idaho sent here. They need to be compared in Honolulu with um, Hawaii fingerprints that are on file for Ms. Vallow. They need to be the results of that analysis need to be checked by another analyst in Honolulu, and then we need to bring the witnesses over here. Uh, and particularly if Your Honor is inclined to apply, uh, we note that the rules of evidence do not apply to identification hearings, but if we are going to have to comply with those rules, then we need to make sure we actually bring the live witnesses here, and that requires coordination with a number of individuals who, and we have been working on that and advised them as soon as we learned this morning that Ms. Vallow intended to continue contest her extradition, we began making those arrangements. But we don't want to get in a situation where we're, we commence next week and then we have to continue because somebody was unavailable, Judge. We want to be able to get it all done at once. And we think, we think that's reasonable in light of the circumstances. Hey, Mr. Hempke, your response? Um, Your Honor, I, didn't, I don't think I heard anything that, goes, that takes three weeks. And we're concerned with her in custody, by the way, for another reason. Yesterday when she was arrested, uh, and we, my office was calling cell block, Mr. DaCosta was calling cell block, and they told him he, she's not here, and basically she was MIA for hours, and we learned since that the Idaho police were questioning her while the Kauai, at the, with the Kauai police, while they knew she was represented by counsel. Um, um, it's just another reason to get this done faster. I mean, fingerprints and fingerprint comparisons don't take very long, um, and, and getting people over here shouldn't take three weeks. Um, and, and, and just in response to the bail argument, she is presumed innocent, and I don't think the state has checked the box of danger to, to the community. They've, they're alleging simultaneously that she, she's not with the child, the children, but that she's a harm to them, and there's certainly no allegation that she's a harm to the community on Kauai. Um, so that's my response. Okay. All right. Uh, anything further? Either side? Unless Your Honor has particular questions. Uh, no, I don't. 
All right. Then, uh, first of all, as to bail, uh, bail is confirmed in the amount of five million dollars. As to the hearing, we will set the hearing. Uh, let me just confirm that. Um, We're going to set it for Monday, March 2nd, 2020. It'll be on the 9 o'clock calendar following our regular um, criminal calendar. May be heard briefly? Yes. Um, I know that Mr. Hempe represented that Ms. Vallow does not have a passport, but could we make it um, a condition that if she does manage to post bail, that if she has one, and we will independently investigate that, if she does have one, that it be a condition of the bail that you turn that in. Okay, you want that uh, surrendered to your office? Uh, to the Kauai Police Department. Okay, and any response to that? She doesn't have a passport. So. Okay, all right, then let me just uh, make it clear on the record, Ms. Vallow, uh, should you bail out, uh, you are to surrender immediately upon bailing out uh, any passports that you may have, and that goes over to the Kauai Police Department for safekeeping. Okay, all right, anything further? Thank you, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Now, with that, court is adjourned. Thank you. Let's go. All rise. Just like you did yesterday. Thank you.